Hello, everybody, and you are all very welcome to our live online workshop for teens, and it's Pop Art Meets Ottoman Turkey with Morat Palta. This workshop is part of Heritage Week. My name is Heidi, and my colleague Justina and I will be in the background if you need any assistance. If you have any questions or you need Morat to slow down or repeat anything, please pop that into the Q&A. But without further delay, I'm going to hand you over to Morat and you can get your workshop started. Morat. Hello, everyone. I hope you are having a good day. Here, Istanbul is quite hot, but <laughs> I'm ready to provide this workshop. And I'd like to thank everyone for inviting me for this beautiful event. And to be honest, I'm a bit excited and uh, not only because you guys are coming and going to watch what I'm going to create, but also English is not my mother language. So I may, it may be a bit troubling for me, but please do not hesitate to ask anything to Heidi and I will try to explain everything as much as I can. Um, here we are going to paint and color this piece and at the first sight it may not mean much other than a guy with you know with skateboard and me he's skateboarding but i will explain why we are doing this and why this person has this kind of hat and why it looks a bit weird out of our time and the reason why is it's called miniature. What we call miniature is it's a form of traditional art in the Eastern region, including Ottoman, which is Turkey today, Iran, India, and other parts of other countries. Um, it's a way of depicting manuscripts, just like you have in um, medieval era you have your own type of paintings for you know those handmade books it's the same uh, the only difference is look and of course the way they interpret it their own time so what i do basically is to you know basing on that idea i keep creating this kind of images but there is a sense of shifting in time. I mean, you can see a regular guy uh, with, you know, Ottoman clothes and everything, but when we look closer, it's making something out of its time. And I think it's fun. And you will see some examples here. I don't know if Justinia is ready. But I will show some examples so that you can grip the idea better. Sorry, just one second. Sure, we got time. Is it okay now? Yes, we can right. see clearly. So, so just tell me when to move to the next slide. Murat, yeah, we can, we can start with the next one. Yes, this is the basic look of what we call miniature art. And you can see some characters trying to reach the top of the tree. And it's a painting from a daily life in Ottoman era. And you can see beautiful ornaments and marble paintings surrounding the main composition. Um, these were all made with various people, including a person who is drawing the lines while other one is coloring and while other one is adding the ornament, ornaments and this kind of things. It's like a graphic design agency that this is what we can interpret for today's equivalent. And we can move with the next one. Here, another example, uh, I guess this is from 16th century, I'm not sure, but it depicts a scene from uh, coffee. Back then, uh, 
coffee was quite popular and is and still coffee is quite popular in Turkey as well. But back then we had this kind of coffee shops and people would visit the coffee and they would drink coffee and talk about daily events and we can see a scene from a coffee depicting what going what's going on we can move with the next one and another one of course this is a bit different but we can also see um a different depictions of habitations um you know, these kind of trees and everything. And these are the general look of what we call miniature art. And basing on that idea, I am going to show what I'm doing as my body of artwork. Let's move with the next one. Here you can see it may look like a, one of those traditional paintings like we saw before, but when we look closer, we can see it's actually about uh, Coyote and what was the Roadrunner? And, you know, you can see Coyote on um, some kind of rocket. I don't know what it's called, but it reads Acme on it. And he ties himself on that rocket, trying to catch the roadrunner here. And it may look like a, you know, a story from medieval time. And I really like that idea. I mean, at the first sight, it gives a look from medieval times. We can move to the next one. And here we can see Lord of the Rings. Here on the left side, we can see Frodo. And what was the name of the character? Uh, Heidi, you have to uh, come in. I'm not I'm not good at that. You're muted. I, e. Oh, hold, yeah. hold on to your seats now. Shall I give you the whole Lord of the Rings story? Do we have six hours? <laughs> yeah. I'm really bad at remembering names, but... There's Frodo that and person, Sam. Yeah, we can see out. Frodo, but that person old guy that Gandalf. says you shall not yes <laughs> place there in green with huge um turban looking hats and we can see the dwarf trying to Gimli. destroy the ring with his axe but he fails yeah we can see that scene here Oh, it's um, the Council of Elrond. So you have Elrond there and the whole council are all gathered around the ring. Yes, exactly. And you can see on the right side, he says one simple, simply cannot walk into Mordor. Yeah, that's Boromir. Oh, yes, so Boromir. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad that you remember all the names, but I'm really bad at it. I may have watched it at least <laughs> 70 times. So, and Reddit. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's <bit>. great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's what Lord of the Rings is. We, we can move on to the next one. And these are from some other stories. On the right side, we can see the little prince. I don't know if you read it, but also on the top of the painting, we can see an Arabic looking text, but it actually in Latin alphabet. It just looks like an Arabic, Arabic alphabet, but it says the little prince on the right side. And you can see it looks like a young, I mean, wait, wait, child prince from that era. That's how they look back then and you can see on the right corner there's a face and it's the way how they depicted sun or maybe moon in Ottoman astrology and on the left side I think you can get the idea pretty quickly and it's of course Don Quixote Cervantes uh, story trying to attack the mill i i don't know if it's called mill is it it is yeah he's trying to attack the mill uh thinking that 
it's some kind of monster. And we can move to the next one. And this is, I think you can get the idea clearly again because of does that anybody dragon. want to actually does anybody want to have a go and try to identify this image? Yeah, please, please yeah, go ahead. Maybe, maybe we can have I, some I answers into a QA. I will be disappointed if you can't find <laughs> because it's it's really easy. Okay, let's let's wait a minute or two and we'll see if we get any answers into the QA. Heidi, you're included if you know what it might be. I'm looking at the names up at the top and what I'm, yeah, Katarina has come in. Is it a game? I think it is because they look like yes. numbers and I can see something called, does that say Raiden? Raiden. Raiden. It's a giveaway. I mean, <laughs> if you, if you played the game, you know what it is. <laughs> and I think the symbol on the floor in front. Yes. Mortal Kombat. The, yes, it is Mortal well Kombat. <laughs> Scorpion. <laughs> against Raiden and we can see that person pops up on the right lower corner saying toasty and we can see the general look from one of those stages with uh, monks I don't know if it's the right word but we mm -hmm. see a craft in the background and one of the stages we can see that it looks alike but in a bit more medieval looking Yeah, we can move with next one. And again, I think it's another easy yeah, part. Should we should we the... should we get another go for uh, for guessing? <laughs> yeah, let's try. Yeah. So these are two different films, or um, so we try to identify one or both. Maybe but they maybe the one on the right hand side is for all their teens and the one on the left hand side for everybody we have some. the right one is quite easy actually we can see kermit yeah let's yeah olivia let's has try. Said star wars and the muppets dania has yeah. the muppets um someone anonymous has put in star wars yeah well I, done. Love, I love yes, that star it looks <laughs> <laughs> yeah with ornaments and everything and we can see in the background as sky there there's marble painting that we saw before in medieval uh, examples uh, we we can see that it's around the main composition and i thought it would be a good idea to you know use it as a sky coloring and it all started like uh 10 years ago i guess at the time when i was trying to graduate and I need to create a um, project to graduate. And I thought it would be a good idea to, you know, depict movies in miniature art style. And Star Wars was the very first thing that I created. Yes, we can see Darth Vader looking like a sultan. And it's actually quite, um, how to say, adaptive. I, I mean, we can easily depict Darth Vader as a sultan and those stormtroopers as janissaries. Janissaries were the name of the soldiers in Ottoman era. So we can see there are resembles, mm -hmm. resemblances actually in, you know, Ottoman uh, era and Star Wars. It can be, you know, rendered into this kind of, Thing. And I okay, just love let's... the way you uh, you used the marbling of paper from the traditional yeah, uh, manuscripts into the sky. It really is amazing. Well done. I really Thank love you. the flames, the flames around Obi Wan and yes. Yoda, and I think that yes, uh, about flames, it's something we can see commonly in miniature art, but it um, usually means something related to someone who is holy like you know when we depict jesus in western art we can see you know uh halo i i don't yes. know if it's the yeah. right word yeah. We yeah. Can, yeah it we can say it's the it's equivalent a flaming of halo. halo yes, yes totally yeah. 
so so in the just for somebody who's interested in in islamic art a lot of you know prophets from old testament are prophets also in islam so if you have a noah or abraham or adam they would be depicted with halos like that around them flaming yeah. halos should we move on and here we can see obi-wan and yoda that's in right flames, yes as well as lightsaber of course that's right <laughs> Okay, let's move with the next one. Yes, another is a piece. Of course, this is Super Mario. And we can see in various stages and the last ones, it reads, thank you, Mario, but the princess is in another, in another castle, which is something we used to face after <laughs> almost every stage until the last one it's what it said and we can see um they are actually placed uh reversed i mean when we play the game we used to see that mario was on the left side while walking towards to the right side uh but here it's reversed because we see in um medieval paintings the picture is red, I mean, from right to left. And the reason why Arabic is, re is red from right to the left side. I love that. That's so clever. Yeah. It's so I simple, think. but so clever. Thanks. That's actually how we read uh, miniatures as well. I mean, uh, we can start reading from the right, uh, uh, inspecting every detail from the right top, maybe. And it's totally the opposite of Western art. So something to think about when you're creating your own miniature. Yeah. And also another thing is uh, Japanese uh, Super Mario was created in Japan. And there's a lot of Japanese cultural related things as well. But of course, uh, they were going to, you know, sell the game to the Western countries such as America and Europe. And of course, it had to be stayed on the left side. So this is what he thought and created in that way. Yeah. Okay, we can move with the next one. And uh, it may a bit hard, it, it may look a bit hard at the beginning, but you will figure out. Let's ask the participants if they can find what it is about. Take a guess, everyone. If you're on Instagram, I think I'm gonna give a hint. There are lots of different memes on Instagram. <laughs> but you already gave a hint saying that it's a meme. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Anyone has any idea? I am not an Instagrammer, so I'm sorry. I'm staying out. <laughs> you don't need to. It's quite popular. It's much the cat. You know, there are two women, you know, getting angry about something, pointing. And on the other side, we see the cat not caring about anything. That's uh, Smudge, the cat, I guess. Yeah, we have Ping and an anonymous attendee are both saying ladies yelling at the cat. The yes, cat yeah, ladies uh -oh. yelling at the cat. <laughs> and surprisingly, it got quite popular. I mean, not yeah. the meme itself, but also this kind of depictions. I came across lots of cultural interpretations. I mean, one in China, looking yeah. in Chinese, traditional Chinese dress, while another one in Japan. And this kind of things is surprisingly depicted, depicted in different cultures. Well, I suppose people all over the world don't like cats being yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move with the latest one i guess the last one would be 
the one I just created for our yes. workshop. Can you see yes. it now? Here we can see a skateboarding kit or teenage, and you can trace it all over and we are going to color it uh, soon. But let me show you how we are going to trace it. And can you see me on your screens? I have to I have to stop screen share then in order okay. for everybody. Now I think everybody should be able to see you. Can okay. you let us know if you can see Murat in full screen? I think if you put it on, you change your, your view settings now to speaker view. So it, you should, if you're if you're on speaker view, you should only see me right now. And then once Murat starts talking, you should only see him. So if everyone wants to change to speaker view now. Okay. Okay, if you can see, I can start explaining how we are going to create or copy this work. You can see I already created my work. And if you want, you can use this kind of tracing paper on it and you can start. Actually, going. Murat, uh, can we actually give um, maybe two or three minutes for everybody to try and copy the image? Yeah, first? of course. So of if course. you want to take the tracing paper out and, oh, okay. just, and just let everybody try to copy your image. Ah, okay. Your original but image, just for a few minutes. I, I, I can uh, show quickly oh, okay. a bit first. Great. We okay. can simply, you know, draw all over the drawing easily because I need to explain a bit so that they can't uh, miss anything. We can, you know, move our pencil, you know, at once as much as we can. Like you can see, for instance, for his knees and ankle, we can go all the way up and down without, you know, moving our pencil at all. I know it may be hard, but if you can do it, it's okay. Just try it. After completing the whole um, character, the everything, we can move to the paper and start, you know, just simply moving our pencil over it so that we can get the look. I don't know if you can see here, but if you just scratch on it, you will get the look again, and then we can start coloring. So let's give you some time to try and trace it. If you have any trouble, please let me know. And how is everything so far? Please let me know about that as well. If you need anything else, a bit more explaining, feel free to ask. Okay, meanwhile, I'll be right back in a second. Sure. And you take your time, everybody. So just try to copy the image as best as you can. Um, and once you're ready to move on, just let us know in the Q&A. Morat, if you could just say one more thing, just to bring the screen back to your screen. Oh, yes, I'm back. I forget about that part. I need to fill my water. Um, but I think it would be better if you take a screenshot or, you know, If you don't know how to take a screenshot, you have to press control key together with alt key and together with print screen, which is on the right hand side, quite high up next to F12. And then paste it into maybe your email or... Uh, I guess, let me move it a bit closer. I just saw that question. Yes, great. Uh, just a second. Let I, me I think don't. Uh, sorry, Murat, if you can just actually turn it back to the way it was, make it vertical, yeah. make it vertical. No, you can bring it closer. Ah, just make okay. it vertical. Okay, I Move need it. to 
move it to okay just a move second. it 90 percent just a second 90 degrees what am i saying 90 percent for <laughs> it needs to be 45 i guess oh you're turning it uh, completely upside down now so the other okay. way around I i'm trying sorry for it because you know it the camera moves again and again First, I need to show to my whole uh, working area so that I can move. So is it good now? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. And probably it's going to fall down <laughs> again. Well, it didn't fall. That's actually quite close. So if we can just hold it like that for a, for a few minutes, that would be great. Okay, just let me move. I hope I didn't move much. And please let us know when you complete with the tracing. Meanwhile, you can explain a bit about your interest and questions in general. Meanwhile, if you like to ask about, you know, medieval painting, miniature art, Islamic art, or my type of art in general, feel free to ask whenever you want. While we are passing our time, I think it might be a challenge to ask while you're tracing and drawing. Yes, <laughs> I know that feeling. Not only asking a question while typing, but also talking during the whole process alone is a bit troubling, especially for me. I mean, like I said, English is not my mother language. And I asked Justinia and Heidi to, um, you know, participate in this as well so that they can help me <laughs> and thank you again. I think you're doing pretty well on your own. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But it would be a bit, you know, I would feel a bit more nervous if it wasn't you. Well, so we, we're happy to help, but, but yeah, you're doing pretty yeah. good on your <laughs> own. <laughs> Definitely. Say something, Murat, because again, the image isn't on you. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I need to keep talking so that you can see my screen, but I need to explain some other things to keep you busy, I guess, right? It's, no, it's, it's a bit tricky for us to talk because then it changes to a screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's a bit tricky for me to speak all the time. <laughs> yes. But tell us how you're getting on. Are you nearly done drawing or do you need a few more minutes? Uh, it's up to the... Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm asking. I'm, I'm not asking you, ah, Murat. No, so, you, you, have done your, you have done your image. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I did. So if, uh, if everybody <laughs> wants to get, let us know how they're getting on and if they need more time, that would be great. So I can see Dania says it's okay. Um, is it okay if we have a little more time? Of course it's it sure, is. Of course. Murat, say something, please. <laughs> okay of course but <laughs> i need to find some uh you know ideas to keep talking about my it, it's okay it's just it's just general. so you back we, we can <laughs> stay quiet it's just so you back um it's back mm -hmm. on your screen i feel like a teacher here <laughs> no i need to keep talking the whole process <laughs> I wish I could see what you are created so far, what you have created so far. 
I'm really curious about how you are going to create it. Meanwhile, I'm drawing something else, but on the, you know, right side. Huh? I can't show you what it is. But I think, Justina, you can fix the look. I mean, you can um, fix the fix my screen, I guess. Can't you? Say again. I think you can fix the screen on, you know, you can fix uh, what I'm creating right now on the screen. Do you know what I mean? No. I, I guess there's a way that you can fix my camera on the screen, no matter what, whether I'm talking or oh, I not. Can, I, can share, I can share the image that you have given to me. So that might be easier, actually. I think if you pin Mora's camera. Uh... Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean by fixing. Oh, OK, OK. okay. So I step share and I, yeah. Okay, is it, uh, there must be a second. way that you can pin my, you know, camera on the screen. And I thought I did pin Murat and it's Heidi instead. Is it still being hidden? Uh, remove pin, okay. Okay, is it good now? Yes, it is, sorry. That's great. And Ping, Ping has actually also uh, said that she is finished now. And our anonymous attendee would also like to know what the next step is with the tracing paper. What What is it? Can you say it again, please? And how to do that tracing paper uh, part where they uh, where you had shaded over the tracing paper. I think yeah. you should you should repeat the entire process yes, let, with the let, tracing let paper. Show you again, just a second, please. Just if we can, if we can have maybe another minute or two and let a few more people yeah, finish, and then we will repeat the tracing process for everybody. Oh, okay, we can wait for a few yeah, minutes. Just another too. minute or two, if that's okay, just to make sure that everybody is actually ready. And just so everybody knows, it's not necessary to add all the little lines, for example. So you see in Murat, like the, the boys' trousers, they have little creases. This is not that important. The main yeah, part yeah. is- You don't need to go to hold, go through whole the details and everything. Just the main outlines would be enough for you. Yeah. And then you can add, once you have traced the image, you can add all those little lines, maybe with color. Yeah. Yeah, because we are going to, you know, paint all over again. That's right. And about the tape, please uh, keep the tracing paper fixed on the top, on the left or right, whatever is suitable for you with the tape so that we can, you know, check again and again because after coloring the, um, you know, that part, uh, and there might be some other things that we might have missed. So we can go through again and again and again to check everything. I'm not using tracing paper because I know what I'm going to create, but for you, it can be needed. So sometimes when I trace things, I either put uh, paper clips in, so um, so the paper stays fixed in place, or otherwise, I think Murat asked that you prepare masking tape. So again, you just attach your tracing paper to the um, yes. to the paper page with the masking tape, so it stays fixed exactly. One image covers exactly the other one. Yeah. And we have another uh, anonymous attendee just saying that they have finished and they're ready to move on to the next section too. Okay, that's good. Uh, should I show once again how I'm going to yeah, trace? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's show that okay. the tracing. Let's tracing paper again and pull it over and we can draw 
it's all over again. Like I said, we don't need those wrinkles on their, you know, clothes or, you know, pants and everything. We don't need that. We only need the main outlines to, you know, what to see what it's going to be like. That, let's say that you completed the whole process and think, and you can see the part you draw over is placed on top and now turn it over and let it face with this on the paper and you can simply just you know, scratch all over the, you know, the part that you draw. Dania wants to know, should she use a pen or is a pencil better? You should use pencil because we need that. I don't know what it's called, but it's better. It might be hard to, you know, trace with pen because we it needs ink and ink can't be, you know, be traced over the paper. I don't know if you can see, but you can, there's already, we got character here, a trace mm -hmm. part. This is why you can see it looks a bit vague. This is why I need you to keep the tracing paper fixed on top or left or right, it's up to you. Because we are going to need it again. How's it going so far? I'm really curious about what you created so far. And we are going to you know, color them as well. And I think it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. As you're doing it, um, please do. We would love to see what you've done. And so you can email into us any of your created works to chesterbeattyonline.ie. I can put that into the chat for you later. But after the workshop, we'd love to hear from you. And we can then show and send on any of the images onto Murat. So we do have a question in yeah. the Q&A. So if you turn the tracing paper over, is the image not then back to front? how back from i mean it's going to be reflected of course but it's not a problem yeah. i mean so it will yes uh, it will be the other way around but that's yes right. yes it, yeah. it's going to be reflected but it's not a problem it's something that we already expect this is the main you know um piece and we don't need to be needed to be reflected or one way or, or around. This is how it is, but you, you, of course you are going to, you know, make it reflected, but it's totally okay. But of course, if you want it to look in that way, you need to trace it again and then <laughs> again, but <laughs> I'm not sure it's a wise idea. Now I'm checking the questions that asked before. Oh, I didn't expect that there are already 20 questions. I wish it wasn't an online workshop that I would come and, you know, show one by one how it's done physically. But unfortunately due to 
the pandemic that we are having right now, it's the only way that I can provide. I know it's very sad that we can't meet, gather physically, yeah. but all in good time, Murat. So there might be opportunities in the future. We never know. Yeah, why not? And it's, you know, it's better than nothing. Yeah, of course, of course. And I hope you are having a great time with this. I'm feeling a bit impatient about. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can see you opening your uh, yes, <laughs> your paints. But hold your horses, Murat. Hold your horses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Now I think we, we should probably short, shortly start moving on. So, what do you think, Heidi? Yeah, I think if Murat wants to start painting in, I mean, we we are recording this, so hopefully we will have it up on our YouTube if people want to rewatch. But I think okay. that if you have the idea that you do your drawing, then we trace it over and now we're going to move on to the next step. And then if you want to even take notes of what the next steps are, if you're still tracing, you can catch up with it after the workshop. Yeah. And no worries. Don't worry about being late about it you are going to fix it anyway because you got time and like i said if it's not good enough trace it again and put it again yeah i know it's a bit time consuming but it worth it trust me because i've been through <laughs> this whole process before so i got various color gouache colors but you don't need to stick with this if you got watercolor, acrylic color, any water-based color would be nice. And you don't need to follow up with every color exactly. I'm, for instance, thinking to use this kind of blue on his jacket. I want to start with his jacket. I don't know why. But you are not obliged to follow step by step. It's up to you. You can use whatever color you wish to use. So it's up to you. Uh, for large areas, uh, for coloring, we are going to have a larger uh, brush. Uh, I don't know what kind of brushes you have, but I have one for eight, for six, for this kind of things. But we are going to need the thin one for, you know, using the outline. But don't worry about it we will start with coloring first and then we are going to add you know outlines with you know strokes and everything and let's start with coloring the jacket yeah here we go Can you guys see it clearly? Yep. Is the angle good? Yeah, it's very good. And just just out of curiosity, Murat, what uh, what size brush are you using? Um, right now I'm using eight, but it's totally up to your using. Mm -hmm. your, it's up to your uh, brush using skill, actually. Okay. okay. So probably um, if you're not very good with the brushes, the smaller the better. Yes, because in the end, we need to keep it inside the lines. That's right. Let's see. It moved a bit out of the line, but it's okay. Not a big deal. It would be better if you follow 
the way it's drawn. I mean, you can see I'm moving my brush upside down instead of using it vertically. It's not a must, but it would be better if you use that in that way. And don't worry about moving your paper back and forth, rotate it. Just, you don't need to keep it fixed. You can move however you wish that makes you comfortable. I think so just Danita, be careful with, um, with the paint so you don't smudge it all over your page. Uh, um, page. Yes. Sorry, Heidi, I interrupted. No, that's okay. Um, Dania just wants to know, after you have scratched over your art onto the paper, should you outline it? Yes, and this is why we need that tracing paper again. Uh, like I said, after coloring, I am going to, you know, use the black lines. I got my black color so that I can, you know, use the outlines. This is why first we are using, because otherwise it would be harder. I mean, we can draw over the line while we are coloring and black is not an easy color to, you know, cover it. This is why we use black, black later. And also, I don't know what size of paper you are using, but uh, right now this is A5, which means half of A4. And I feel more comfortable, but like I said, you don't need to stick with every instruction. And don't worry if it's not, I don't know how to tell this in English, but it might not be a solid color. You don't, no need to worry about it. Just wait it to dry and paint it over again. But please do not try to uh, paint again, right when it's not dry. Just wait and be patient, and that's all. We are going to fix it. And for now, we are ready with blue color. And I, for now, I don't think to use it in any other place. I can use this, not this one, but maybe red color here. Okay, let's continue with red color. Um, thinking to use it on his shoes. And Heidi, do you think is there a way that we can see the pieces later that 
are participants created? Absolutely. So what we can do is if everyone emails us in at Chester Beatty online, we can then show you, we can email you some of the images and then hopefully we'll be able to put some of them up on social media as well. Yeah, that would be great. And yeah. please, please do not be shy about it. Don't worry if you think it looks bad, be confident about it. And if you think it's bad, then it's bad. It's not a big deal. We are not expecting it to be like super realistic, neither super traditional looking. We don't need that. We are just going experimental and I'm really, really curious about what you are doing right now. And of course, it's your own art, so you can put your own artistic spin on it. Yes, please do not hesitate about it, because you will see that I'm going to add some more, you know, ornaments and this kind of stuff, and you don't need to stick with the ornaments either. You can add your own type of ornaments. For instance, you can use pineapple on his shirt, or you can use avocado or another thing, it's totally up to you. Maybe I can use a floral type of um, ornament, but I haven't decided yet. And about being, you know, good at it, I mentioned that you don't need to be afraid of what you created because it's already a primitive type of uh, art. When you look at the medieval paintings, you can see they're already bad. I mean, oh, oh come on, Murat, they are amazing. I mean, they are <laughs> and when you look at way. what I mean is. And when you the look characters at characters are out of proportion, you can see they have small legs or I don't know, these kind of things, they are not super realistic, but no, they're not. that's them... the thing. Absolutely. They're not very realistic yes. at all, but they are really beautiful. Yes, they but are that's beautiful. A, but that's course. exactly it. I think, you know, art, art is it's not something that it is objective. Art is something that is subjective. Art is what we like or dislike what we enjoy or not enjoy art is drawing on our emotions not our uh, intellect and that's a beauty of art we don't totally. need to understand everything to appreciate it very much and i think that's really a, a, a big strength of art i think people underestimate their uh, you know talents i mean because I understand they feel a bit of afraid of what they are creating, but in the end, your art is the way you see your work and it's precious. And I'm not saying to be kind, but I'm saying it because it's the truth. I mean, when we look at uh, naive art, there are many, many beautiful things, especially from 80s, 18th, I mean, 19th century from the South America, we can see very beautiful landscapes and this kind of things and pieces from daily life. To be honest, they are not, um, how to say, accurate in terms of anatomy, uh, composition, and these kind of things, but it really reflects what they see during that time. It feels like some kind of documentary. And again, it goes with miniature art as well. We see mm -hmm. what they see during those times and it reflects that and it's precious. We can, I think we can color the whole part. And I'm not a judgmental person, so don't worry about feeling being criticized.
do you think we are going to need the whole process till the end or maybe some main parts oh, no, yeah no i think i think we can skip some parts i think that the general idea is very yes. clear yes. otherwise it might take us another good little while to finish after all you get the idea about how exactly. to follow but there are some other tricks that i'm going to show great such as let me bring my gold color here. Yes. This blue part is already dried, so I can go over with tiny ornaments. And for that, I'm planning to use gold color. And if you have gold color, I suggest you to use it as well because it looks beautiful as an ornament on their um, clothes. And it was a very popular color in Ottoman Turkey, yes. wasn't it? They if really you, like colorful. Yes. <laughs> if you if you come to the Chester Beatty, um, on the second floor, we have a case with Turkish prayer books. And I think you can find every shade of gold in those prayer books. They're yeah, from beautiful. quite bright and light golds to, um, you know, to quite dark and, um, you know, as if it was kind of slightly tarnished. Uh, it isn't. I think it was on purpose done like that. But it's it's every single shade and every single grade of gold in a, in a small case of maybe five or six books. It's quite amazing. And they are, what I think they are Turkish books. Probably. And um, what does tarnish mean? Um, it's when it, it gets oxidated, oxidized, you know, ah. when, the, when it's exposed to mm. air. To the air. Yes. Yeah. So mm. when silver goes black or it goes green. And um, yeah, when you see the gold in, our, in the Chester Beatty, it is real gold on all the books. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And I can see Dania actually says that she has come and she has seen them. Thank you very much for visiting. I hope most of you have will have popped in and had a look at some of the, the things that we do have on display from all sorts of different cultures and places. Yeah, I really like to visit. I'm really curious about those pieces as well, not only for Ottoman, but also for other manuscripts because I love no matter where they are based on I really like you know traditional um, historical these kind of things always attracted me as well as popular culture and I really like to blend those two different types together in my art and it's always inspirational and I received many messages saying that they were not really interested in traditional miniature art before um, coming across my art. After seeing my art, they had different kind of sight in um, traditional art. So this is beautiful. Hearing that is good. And I understand, I understand people might find traditional art boring it's totally okay but the thing is when you look closer and try to understand what they are really about it attracts you more and more i think so many of the thing of the themes that you you look at though are actually inspired by um traditional stories you know even lord of the rings or even a lot of the games contemporary gaming they're all based on totally stories, I, I, I have many examples for that like i said if you have interest in both you can easily see the pattern in there because those people who created this kind of stories i mean like i said video games or books or these kind of things they were keen on these kind of things as well it's 
especially for Star Wars, there are many hints to mythology in that. And his mythology teacher was John, I guess I always forget his name, but I guess it was Joseph Campbell. And he has some Heidi's books uncle. about, what is it? <laughs> Heidi's uncle. <laughs> my, my surname is Campbell, so he must ah. be somewhere <laughs> <in> the family. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Sorry, just laughing because Heidi's, mm. Heidi's last name is the same. <laughs> but it's a common one, isn't it? It's quite common, all yeah, right. Yeah, we're, we're, I think on every continent. And I'm related to probably all of them. <laughs> probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And my name is quite common in Turkey. I think it's the most common fifth name for males here, Murat. Uh, but but Heidi's last name is Campbell. So Heidi's yeah. first name is actually not very popular at all, I think. Uh, maybe in some Nordic countries or German. It's German, it's German Germanic, yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe in Scandinavia, I think you would find a few Heidi's and in Germany and Austria, maybe you'll find few Heidi's, although I don't think it's that common either. However, Heidi's surname. Yeah, Campbell is, is everywhere. Uh, <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I think Murat is quite common, all right, but I, I, I don't think I came across anybody's last name, like your last name, Murat, mm, although yeah. maybe it is more popular than I think it might be. No, no, it's not popular as a surname either. Okay. And what about your name? My name is common in Poland, yeah. Both Justyna yeah. and Chmielewska. Very common. But nowhere outside of Poland. I think in... Um, in here in Ireland, in UK and in, um, in US, just generally speaking in Anglo-Saxon countries, it's more common as a boy's name, so Justin. Oh. rather than Justine, you know, so I think there is quite a lot of boys whose name is Justin, but there isn't that many girls whose name is Justine, while Justyna is only a female name in Poland, oh. and at least amongst people my age, it was a very common name. Oh, so okay. in my primary school, I think there were two more girls with the same given name, and in my high school, there was one more girl. No, sorry, also two more girls, so yeah. So, yeah, I was one of very many. <laughs> and my surname is, I think, uh, 13th most popular in Poland right now. So very common. Oh. It might be a bit boring sometimes to have a common name, right? Um, I don't mind. I quite, I quite like my last name, actually. Yeah. So... <laughs> Can you say it again? Chmielewska. Justyna Chmielewska. That's proper pronunciation. None of this it's, Justyna it's... Chmielski or whatever. I'm not going to even try. That's quite all right. I am not. Yeah. I have heard it pronounced many different ways and I always know they, they're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> but but Polish is a harsh language for somebody who's not who's not from, you know, Slavic countries. Uh, I don't know if it's, it can be called harsh, but I can say it's, I don't know, it sounds a bit melodic, to be honest. Mm. Okay. There are many J and L sounds. Yeah, exactly. And I think those J sounds are very difficult for everybody. J, yeah. Ch, Ch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we were um, we were laughing that certain, especially um, you know towns and village names were were devised specifically to trial the foreigners when <laughs> <laughs> they try to find them like stretching, stretino, stutov. We said you know if you're trying to come to to Poland on holidays or you go into these places you're never gonna be able to pronounce them. <laughs> But I don't know what it's called, but is it a language that 
uh, have many suffixes. I mean, when we talk about Turkish, it's a bit different from English language because um, there are many suffixes that uh, point time, person, and this kind of things. Like you can use just one word. Yes. And it can mean a whole sentence. Mm. No, Polish is not I, like that. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean, but I don't think Polish is like that. Ah, okay. For instance, we don't have the article. No, we, we don't, don't have. We have the these, these kind of things. We don't have. We don't. We don't have that in Poland either, actually. Um, but I think it's quite uncommon for European languages. So yeah. Slavic Slavic languages do not have. Um, yeah. articles but but I think it's quite uncommon most of the you know all the Germanic all the um, francophone languages all the you know yeah. the English of course they all have all the kind of you know the, the Spanish the Portuguese Italian they all have articles so I okay. find articles quite quite annoying and quite confusing <laughs> Meanwhile, I need to show you the other part that I need to show. Yes, but is, I think we should try to finish up shortly. Yes, which is using with, you know, moving on to the outlines. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we need to keep the tracing paper fixed with the uh, bands. So if we can't see those outlines that we draw on uh, with pen, we can simply trace it over again and use it again so that, that we can see the outlines. But if you can see, you can use that tiny, you know, I don't know if you can see, it's quite a tiny brush that you can see for outlines. Let me show you. So, you know, sometimes you can buy brushes like zero or double zero or triple zero. And um, these are probably the best for those outlines. Totally. Uh, for instance, this one is double zero. I'm using a double zero. But like I said, it's not a must. If you feel comfortable and you can think the thickness is good enough for you, you can use whatever you want. And I just think that if you're not that confident with your brush, it's okay to actually use a very uh, thin ball pen. Perhaps yeah, like, totally. yes. you know, black, maybe, um, what are the brands? God, my, my thing escaped me. Uh, like Uniball, you know, sometimes you can bind 0 0.3, 0 0.2 thickness. So I think yes. if you're not that confident with your brush work yet, you can try to use pen so, instead. Because the reason why we are using this kind of brush is it goes thin and when you put a bit more pressure, it goes um, thicker and then thinner again so that there's a nuance. I don't know if it's the right yes, word for that, but the line goes um, not just a straight line, but it goes thin and thick again and then thin again this is why i'm using this one but of course i can use ball i don't know what what, what was it called again ballpoint pen ball uh, is it what you call uniball uniball uni yeah yes you can use this kind of things as well sometimes also just testing the brush first so instead of going straight away into the page with the brush you can have a separate brush where you just practice your strokes first so your hand gets confident and then yeah. you can start with the outlines so murat is well seasoned artist and he has been working with miniatures for a few years now so he's very comfortable yeah going straight in but you can have a practice page first so you can do some warm-up exercises first you know doing your lines yeah. horizontal vertical curves and then 
once you're ready, once you feel that you have a good control, you can go into your um, into your, um, your you know your artwork. To be honest, if it turns out good, I would be a bit disappointed. <laughs> I mean, for myself, because it's hard. But if someone makes it great, I would be a bit, how to say, jealous, maybe. We won't show you the good ones. We won't show you the good ones. Yeah, we'll keep them for ourselves. Do not do it too perfect. I have, to, I have to tell you, Murad, that you know we we have been uh, doing these workshops for a few, few years now and with some of our attendees we have a long-standing relationship and they produce some amazing work yeah so you might get very jealous <laughs> please <laughs> do it just in our in our groups yeah <laughs> there is really some amazing talent amongst uh participants really that's we why have been, I really we have been well impressed. And are you using um, Indian ink for the outlines? I don't know what type of ink, but it's, it's just ink. The black color would be nice, but again, it's not a must. It's you whatever you have at home, of course. Yes. The most important thing about black color is it should be. Um, dark and um, what i mean is the outlines should really be darker needs right to put the uh, um contrast between the color and the outline this is the most essential thing other than that it doesn't matter what type of color or black you are using And I think everyone, if you want to see more of, of Morat's work, um, please do check out his website. It's moratfalta.com. Yes. It, it's absolutely amazing. And you'll be able to see and maybe be inspired to create even more. We'd love you to come in to the Chester Beauty, maybe have a look at some of our manuscripts, have a look at some of Morat's work and maybe create your own blend of pop art and traditional art. I mean, there's there's just such amazing ideas and the art is absolutely amazing that's on the project yeah, thank you and <laughs> pretty just fantastic. do not hesitate to ask any question related to my art or in general anything that you really want to know don't hesitate to send an email We'll be very happy to ask on your behalf as well. So you're very welcome to, um, yeah. to write to us and it we will pass the questions on to Murat. Yeah, it doesn't need to be related to our workshop. It doesn't matter what it is about, but I will be glad to help you. Okay. I think well done. We uh, actually, I can continue, of course but we don't have enough time for that, I guess, because if you want, I can continue. It's totally up to you. I think that is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. I know, apologies, we have gone so far over time, but I think it was just so <laughs> enjoyable and so wonderful. And I want to, first of all, thank you, Marat. Um, I have yeah, to but thank one last thing. Yeah, yeah, go one ahead. One last thing. This is why I said do not do it too perfect because we are going to destroy it again. And this is why I ask you to bring some, you know, sandpapers because like you can see, there are some uh, smudges, tiny smudges. Normally I would uh, color it all over again. But the thing is, we are going to make a bit more nature look because it looks too perfect. So this is why we need to move our sandpaper on it so that it, it can look a bit more organic. I mean, you already seen my artwork and there are many uh, torn parts in it. And this is how I create them. Do not worry about going it over like, you do not think it too precious because in the end, 
they are all historical and by the time it, they got a bit made a bit torn and you said you used a word but i forgot but the gold got a bit darker by the time so this is what we want to have in our art so do not worry about smashing all over so after completing the whole process you can use your sandpaper to you know move it over it and i think they are going to look beautiful you may think it may be something that you didn't want like this kind of but it's a part of it so don't worry about it but you only, That's what you I was only going do the smudges you only do the smudges yes. once you have completed everything right so yes, colors blend after together the whole process uh, one suggestion do not try to push hard on the face because we need to see it somehow but other than that feel free let it turn don't worry about it it's in the game <laughs>